100,000 were wounded and maimed with no leg, no hand. And thousands become refugees in front of me going to another country. The sprawling refugee camps on the Pakistani side of the border provide indisputable evidence of the continuing crisis. Since the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in 1979, nearly three million Afghans have poured across Pakistan's long, unguarded border. With five million refugees, three in Pakistan, two in Iran, and the rest who remain at the outside, it became a jeune massacre for those who remained. Et les gens qui ne sont qui n'ont pas fui, c'est soit parce qu'ils étaient trop loin de la frontière et trop pauvres. Ça coûte très cher de partir. Il y avait les blessés civils et les blessés des combattants afghans. Il y avait les blessés civils et les enfants en particulier qui étaient qui avaient un bras arraché, une main arrachée. Et il devient une charge pour la société. Parce que un mort, on le regrette, mais un, un handicapé, ça fait mal à toute la famille. I talked to a lot of refugees coming out, making their way toward Pakistan, and they'd be walking up this very, very difficult mountain pass. Children forced to walk, you know, uh, pe you know, men carrying their kids. Uh, it was the most pathetic sight. And they would sleep in the mountain passes overnight, and of course they would die of exposures. And that's where you saw what impact of war is. You would always see grave upon grave upon grave of people who died. Life is dangerous in Afghanistan. I have to escape from Afghanistan, our, our lovely country, to go to the Pakistan with, to join with our brother and Muslim brother. Even I personally lived through all these things, and I sometimes when I think that how much capacity you as a human have, how much resilience you can build, how much capacity you would have to digest all these. And I think we should burst, we should turn to pieces with all these, um, Pain. When Afghanistan was under the occupation of the Soviets, the news of human suffering went to the Muslim world. There were boys who wanted to come and help Afghan war against the Soviets. My age was 23, 24 years in that time. I was living in the west of Algeria. I read that Afghanistan was occupied by Soviet Red Army and Muslims should help their brothers in Afghanistan to liberate their land. Afghanistan became very famous in the Arab world. And then everyone started thinking how to join, how to help, how to go. I first started coming across Arabs in Peshawar. When you had these rather wealthy Saudis would turn up or from the Emirates, and they literally had suitcases with them full of money. It wasn't military in the early days. It was humanitarian. It was clinics, schools, and mosques, primarily mosques. And even bin Laden, he began as a humanitarian. I found Osama bin Laden uh, active full-time in Peshawar. I remember two guest houses 
to welcome the Arabs when they come before they send them inside Afghanistan. Osama bin Laden used to give the money for this, you know, rent, uh, expenditure, one small car to bring the shopping to the, the, the uh, telephone for the bills, uh, this, this. And he continued doing like that till eight, uh, late 87. In Peshawar, the Arabs were reaching out to Afghan refugees, recruiting from the youngest among them. All these Arabs who were involved, I mean, I seen it. They trained them that to be that extreme. In all the camps, they build, build madrasas, the religious school, so-called. The Afghan families give the male children to these madrasas to be educated, to be fed it. Then they were kept over there to segregate them, to train them, to brainwash them. They were the one who become Taliban. No education, no formal education. People call some of them fanatics. Yeah, everybody has a fanatic somewhere deep inside them. If, if you bring in 120,000 Soviet troops and kill a million people and wound a million and a half and drive five million into exile, you might get a little fanatic. Politics is always dirty. And the countries who are involved, they choose the most conservative group of people and train them and make them monsters just to get rid of the USSR. То, что мы не выиграем эту войну, стало понятно, потому что каждый день я видел, как приезжает грузовик. Этот грузовик сваливает трупы, и их разбирают и заколачивают в ящики. Официально опубликовать рассказ об этом в газете я, конечно, не мог. До самого последнего дня войны действовало правило. В одном репортаже один убитый, два раненых. In 1986, Moscow admitted that it was impossible to win against a guerrilla force that had the support of the population and was supplied by the West and the Arab world. Невозможно выиграть у людей войну. Невозможно. Тем более партизанскую войну. У нас же еще раз это не была задача не армии. It was the new Soviet leader, Mikhail Gorbachev, who finally sought a way out of the Afghan trap. Контрреволюция и империализм превратили в кровоточащую рану Афганистан. Мы хотели бы уже в самом близком будущем вернуть на родину советские войска, находящиеся в Афганистане. For U.S. President Ronald Reagan, the USSR was the evil empire. In the struggles of the Soviet army, Reagan saw an opportunity to give the enemy a final blow. American support of the Afghan freedom fighters escalated. When we support the Afghan people, we become caught up in and ennobled by their struggle for freedom. Isn't that what America is always stood for and what we should stand for in 1986 and beyond? Up to that point, I believe U.S. policy was to bleed the Soviets, to fight to the last Afghan. And Ronald Reagan, who had this sense of morality of right and wrong and things like that, they decided they weren't going to fight to the last Afghan anymore. They were going to give them whatever they needed. 
to win. The head of CIA said, I'm going to give you a billion dollars this year. Do you, do you think that's enough? Well, how would I know what a billion dollars, whether it was enough or not? I didn't know it. I said, let me try. And so CIA then began to really move on the Afghan thing. It was sort of patience my ass. Let's get out there and shoot some Russians. The Mujahideen had been slaughtered by Soviet uh, gunships and nothing we were able to give them would work effectively. So we said, you can have Stinger missiles. Stinger's was one of the most effective anti-air missile. It was light, it was movable, not difficult to learn, put on your shoulder, and the rocket goes, and the plane comes down. By the first shot, we told the Russians, you are no longer the king of the air. We can stop you. And that was the beginning of their defeat. As the Soviets negotiated their withdrawal, life in Kabul became unbearable. The Mujahideen had almost sieged the city. Fuel and food became scarce, and more people wanted to flee. The Soviet Union today formally agreed to pull its troops out of Afghanistan. You want to fight a war? Be on the side of the resistance, and you'll always win. They don't lose. What did the CIA effort cost over a 10-year period from December 1979 to February 1989? Five or six billion dollars? Five or six billion dollars is what, a month of our effort in Afghanistan today? One month? With no chance of winning? One month? In 1989, the Soviet expedition into Afghanistan finally came to an end. Ten years after its start, the communist government in Kabul was left alone to deal with a divided nation and an economy in tatters. The war left 15,000 dead on the Soviet side and an estimated one million Afghan victims. But the Soviet withdrawal would not end the war in Afghanistan. <laughs> Against all odds, the Mujahideen resisted the mighty Soviet army for 10 long years. Now, they got ready to overrun the communist government in Kabul. But the conflicts between the commanders would open the next dark chapter in the country's history. The day I saw the Soviet tanks leaving Afghanistan, the back of the tanks going out of Afghanistan, that was a day that I indeed thought that what we dreamed now comes true. But immediately I felt in between hope and fear. We saw the last Soviet soldier lift the country. We were being like, oh God, finally, finally. They, they left and we won the war. This is the chapter close and the new chapter will start, but the good one. We feel so free. It's like, breathe back and this is the country back. But, Lots of bad things happen. 
it was not the end of the journey of the Afghan people. Если американцы ставили перед собой задачу э, устроить некий Вьетнам для русских, да, они эту задачу сделали, они ее выполнили. Но у этого есть свой результат. Да, развалился Советский Союз. Но мы теперь имеем ИГИЛ. ИГИЛ выросла из Аль-Каиды. Аль-Каида выросла из Талибана. Талибан вырос из, мухи, из муджахидинов, которых вырастила ЦРУ, вырастили Соединенные Штаты. Наша вина огромна, вина Советского Союза, но она сопоставима с виной Соединенных Штатов. The day that the Soviets withdrew from Afghanistan, that was a very, very special day for every Afghan, including me. Because we waited so long for the enemy to leave us alone. Here while going, one thing which struck me was that they were happy. It means the soldiers also didn't want to stay in Afghanistan and leave the country and stop killing or being killed. But soon we were just again locked, blocked, besieged by a war, very nasty war. For 10 years, the Afghans lived under occupation. More than 600,000 soldiers were deployed by the Soviet Union to control the country. 